Hello, I'm now going to go through another type of number system called hexadecimal. Now this is used a lot in computing. Once you learn what it is, you'll start to spot it in quite a few different places which you might not notice having not learnt it. So really useful to learn, it's used a lot in computing. One example before I begin is something like a colour picker. When you are choosing a colour on a website or in a, a Word document, often the colour itself is not expressed as in words, it's expressed with a hexadecimal number. So if you see a mix of letters and numbers, that is going to be hexadecimal. So hexadecimal is another number system like binary and decimal. So they are all equivalent. We use decimal in our lives. Computers use binary all the time. Hexadecimal is like a nice bridge between binary and decimal. So as you can probably get a sense of from the name, it uses 16 digits. You could get a sense of it because hex or hexa as a word root is 6 and decimal, deca, is 10. 10 plus 6 is 16. So that's why it's called hexadecimal. It has 16 digits. Binary has 2, decimal has got 10. So to compare it to decimal, hexadecimal has the first 10 digits, 0 to 9, are the same as in decimal. So they are exactly the same. So seven in hexadecimal is seven in decimal. After we get after nine, it gets a little bit odd because we need to find six more digits. And because we run out of numbers to use, we have to use letters. Okay, so A represents 10, B 11, C 12, D 13, E 14, F 15. There isn't a G, okay, there isn't a 16 because if you count, we've got 16 in total so the only letters we use are A, B, C, D, E, F. There aren't any more letters used in hexadecimal. So I'd say the main thing you've got to learn is that A is 10, F is 15. When I'm doing questions, I always write this down so I don't forget. And to figure out the letters in between, you can just work up the numerical sequence. So um, I kind of said why hexadecimal was used, or not really actually, um, it's used because we can simplify long binary numbers. So hexadecimal was really really good at shortening binary numbers. And this is because, another thing to learn, one hexadecimal digit, one hex digit for short, equals four binary digits. So for every four zeros and ones, we can replace it with one hexadecimal digit. That's really really important for later on. Right, let's do some conversions. So first of all, I want to convert 1, 2 from hexadecimal into decimal. Now, this looks like 12, but it's not 12 because it's in hexadecimal. And 12, as a, as a concept, doesn't exist in this way. So 12 would be something different in hexadecimal. So this is 1, 2 and not 12. Like with binary, first step is always to draw in my place value table. In binary, it was always 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, and so on and so on. We kept doubling each time because we had two digits. Now, because we've got 16 digits, we are multiplying by 16. So the numbers get bigger, but it always starts with 1, and then 16, then if you need it, 256, and then so on and so on. The numbers get quite big. Okay, so you'll, ever, you'll ne only ever really deal with fairly short numbers, okay? In this particular example, I've got two digits, so I only need one and 16. Okay, so for all of the questions, pretty much, you'll be needing just one and 16. Once you have the table written in, you can write in your number, one and two. And now, you might be able to see what you do to get the answer. What you must now do is multiply the row by the heading. So I've got one, times 16 plus 2 times 1. So 16 plus 2 is 18. Okay, so the answer is 18. So weirdly, what looks like 12 but isn't 12 is actually equal to 18 in hexadecimal. So that looks very weird, but it does make sense if you consider the one on the left is in hex. Okay, let's look at another example. If you think you've understood, maybe try this as I'm doing it or pause and try it. Let's now convert C8. So here we've got a letter before I just had one and two. 
So they were quite straightforward. Now I've got a letter. So first step as always is to draw in the table, one, 16. I've only got two digits, so I just need two columns. Now I put in my number, so C8 doesn't seem like a number, but it is a number. And now I do the same thing again. So I need to multiply my row by my column heading. So what I'm effectively doing is C times 16. So you multiply the row by the column heading, then you add it with the next one, eight times one. Now you can't multiply C times 16, except that C is, well, let's figure out. So A is 10, B is 11, and so therefore C is actually 12. So C represents the decimal number 12. So really, I'm doing 12 times 16 plus eight times one, which if you do maths is 192 plus eight, which is 200. So C8 is 200 in decimal. Right, so let me show you how to go the other way around, going from decimal into hexadecimal. So now I've got 24. This is 24 because it's in decimal and not hexadecimal. So first step, like always, is to draw the table. 1, 16, and we keep going with our column headings until I reach a column heading which is too big. Okay, so the next one, as we know, is 256. This is bigger than 24, and so therefore I do not need it. The next step, like in binary, is to go, how many times does 16 go into 24? So 16 goes in 24 one time with a remainder of eight. And now what I do is go, how many times does one go into eight? Well, it goes in eight times, therefore the answer is one eight. So 24 is one eight in hexadecimal. Now let's convert a bigger number, so converting 142 to hexadecimal. So despite being bigger, the columns are still the same, 1 and 16, because it's smaller than 256. Now here you might want to use a calculator because the numbers get bigger. So what we're doing is 142 divided by 16, effectively, which as I did just now, is 8 point something. Okay, so because 16 goes in 8 times, that means I'm going to write in 8 under 16. Now to find the remainder, what you should do is 142 minus 8 times 16, which again, as I just did, um, is 14. Okay, so now really my remainder is 14. That's what I just found out. So now, final step, how many times is 1 going to 14? Well, it goes in 14 times, but I can't really write down 14 here because that's two digits and I've only got space for one. So what was 14 in hexadecimal? Well, 14 is E. So therefore I write down E, and the final answer is eight E. If you think you might forget the letters, just simply in the exam write down A is 10, B is 11, etc., etc., until F is 15, right? It'll take you 20 seconds to write down and it will just reduce the risk of a mistake. Let's look at an example which I think really demonstrates why hexadecimal is used. It's not just a weird thing you've got to learn, it is really, really useful in computer science. So that's because to go from binary to hexadecimal is really, really easy. Here I've got a binary number 10111001. Okay, not a massive number, but it's not small either. What you could do is convert this whole number into decimal and then convert from decimal into hexadecimal. But actually, because of what I said right at the start, that one hex digit equals four binary digits, you are able to convert really, really simply. Okay, so in this, in this number here, I've got two lots of four binary digits. So what I should do is convert each group of four separately. So what I do, look at my first binary digit, uh, first four binary digits, I should say. We need to find out what this is in decimal. So to convert to decimal, what you do is do the place value table, one, two, four, and eight. You add up when you've got a one underneath. So what you're doing is eight plus two plus one,
which is 11. Okay, so 1011 is 11 in decimal. Now, 11 in decimal is not hexadecimal. So what was 11 again in hexadecimal? Well, 11 is B. So 10 is A, 11 is B. So we've now got the first four in hexadecimal, and I do the same thing again with my second four. So 1001, again, doing the little table if it helps you. 1, 2, 4, 8. 8 plus 1 is 9. And now putting 9 into hexadecimal, or 9 in hexadecimal is just 9. The letters only come in after 10. So this long binary number is actually really simply just B9 in hexadecimal. Really, really simple. All you do is convert each group of four. It only being four means the numbers are always going to be quite small. So it's really, really easy. Looking then at another example, same process again. You, well, you could write down a number first of all. And by the way, that space left between each group of four, this is why it's there, right? We often write spaces after each four in binary because it makes it easier for us when we want to convert it to hexadecimal. So now I've got my number, all I do is look at each group of four independently. So this first one, 1111, is going to be 15 in decimal. Uh, let's do all of them in decimal first of all. So 8, 4, 2, 1. This is simply just 1. And this third one, well, that's the 8th column, is just 8. Okay, now what's really important is we can convert each of these to hexadecimal. Don't forget to do this. So 15 is F. 1 is just 1. 8 is just 8. And now you can just put them together straight away and that it becomes the answer. So this long binary number is F18 in hexadecimal. To do the reverse process going from hexadecimal to binary, it's the same thing again. You look at each digit on its own and convert it to the 4-bit binary. So A on its own is 10, and 10 in binary is 1010. 0 is 0, which in binary is just 0. But really, really importantly, each one of these digits represents four binary digits. So you've got to make sure you always write in four, in this case, zeros, to make it work properly. If you only wrote in one or none, the answer would be incorrect. And this third one, one in binary, uh, one in decimal is just one, which is just zero, 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 one. Again, those zeros at the start are essential. If you didn't write those in, you would get the answer wrong. So the answer should be, when you stick them together, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and 1. So you've got to put each digit's value together, and the answer is correct. 